Welcome to Online AP Stats using the Schoology. This video is going to give you a quick overview of how an entire chapter will work on Schoology and how you can navigate through it. Now the entire course is already set up here in 12 different folders for the 12 chapters. Over to the right hand side on Schoology you can always see the upcoming assignments that will be due for a week. Or if you click on this calendar icon here, you can page through and look at what the plan is for a month or the following months. You'll also notice over here under each chapter folder it says must complete. So before you can move on to chapter 2, you must complete all of the material for chapter 1. This is not a self-paced online course. This course is meant to be done as it would be in a brick and mortar class in staying on pace with what is expected of you. Again, the calendar activities here will always tell you what you need to do for that day's learning. The AP course is actually broken into four main topics in 12 chapters. If you plan on taking the actual AP exam, which is not required, but if you do, the 2018 year's test is scheduled for Thursday, May 17th at noon. That test is comprised of 40 multiple choice questions where you get 90 minutes to take that, and then six free response questions where you have another 90 minutes. Uh, the course curriculum to help you learn and prepare for that test is a combination of some online formative assessments and some paper-based summative assessments. Of the four topics, the first three chapters cover the exploration of data, and that makes up 20 to 30 percent of the actual AP exam. Chapter four is just planning a study, and that's 10 to 15 percent. Uh, probability is chapters 5, 6, and 7, and you can expect 20 to 30 percent of your test to cover that topic. And the last one is chapters 8 through 12, which is statistical inference, which is 30 to 40 percent of the exam. You'll notice all of the folders here have the appropriate chapter titles, and they're color-coded based on the topics. So we have topic 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have a folder for the final prep as we get ready for the exam. Now if you click inside the course resources folder, you'll find a variety of documents. One of the documents is the online student textbook. You will all be given a hard copy of the book, but if you ever need to reference it, you can uh, click on this link and use the various passwords that you will need for logging in. On the actual AP exam, there are formula sheets, so I try to simulate that throughout the class. This uh, document right here, the formulas AP stats exam, will bring you to a packet of formulas that will be supplied to you on the actual AP exam. Now for our chapter test, I will let you use a formula sheet, but it will be supplied to me. If you want a copy of it yourself, it's right here. It's the formula sheet laminate, and it looks like this. It's the four handouts condensed onto one. Again, this is what you will get for your chapter test versus this document is for the actual AP exam. Uh, you also will find a table D, which will be referenced later on in the book. And it's basically a table of random digits, which will make more sense later on. If you'd like something about vocabulary, a wall of words, I have the key vocab words for every chapter. Um, there's also some hints on how to write for your free responses on AP exams. I encourage you to read this. If you click on it, it will bring you to this article down here in the right. And the last document is, uh, what is the college credit policy for this exam? If you know which college you're going to attend, I encourage you to click on that. And when you get to it over here, it's going to ask you for your college. Click on it, and it'll tell you um, if you get credit for a 3, a 4, or a 5, which statistics course they will actually give you credit for. So it's a pretty helpful and interesting link. The curriculum for every chapter will be set up in a similar fashion. So when you go into a chapter, you're going to notice there's always the chapter resources, followed by a chapter opener. Then here you notice that there are seven days of orange folders. Day one lists the learning objectives that will be learned that day, and day two has its learning objecti objectives and so forth. So this is all of the learning in the curriculum. Once you've done the learning, then we're going to switch over and do a free response for that chapter. And here you're going to critique some free responses, and you're going to try your own write-ups and see how well you do. Then we have some review for the chapter as we, we prepare for the multiple choice and free response test. There will also be an opportunity to make some helpful videos to help each other out in your learning process. This will then be followed up with a paper-based test, one multiple choice exam, and one free ex uh, response exam per chapter. 
They are listed here on Schoology, but these are the paper-based things you will be doing. Now, if your test doesn't go well for you, there is going to be a test retake opportunity for both of these exams. Now let's dive into each of these folders and see what they contain. When you click into the chapter resources, one of the first things you will find are the notes for the chapter. I will print out and supply for you a chapter note packet for each of the 12 chapters, so you'll want to swing by my room and pick that up before you start your learning. Embedded in this chapter packet is actually the plan for the entire chapter. So you can find it in the packet or you could click here for the chapter tracker to see what problems you're going to be practicing, which learning objectives you will be covering which days. The other thing I have is a Google Doc of some helpful hints I've made along the way. I highly suggest you read this document before you take your exam or even before you start the chapter to see some of the key things we might be talking about. Each chapter will always have an opener. This may include an activity, a video, or something that you read just to prep you about what the chapter learning will be about. Now let's take a look at what would a typical day's learning look like. Here I have day three's learning, which covers learning objectives from section 1.1, letters D, E, and F. These are the particular objectives that the lesson will cover. When you click in that folder, uh, this folder here is going to have to happen in a sequence. If you click on student progress, it will show you the order in which things have to happen. And you're going to see it laid out in that particular order. This first one here is the video notes for learning objectives D and E. You're going to notice here it says you must view the item to move forward. So watch the video, get out your note packet, and complete your notes. When you're done with that, then click on this practice document. When you click on the practice document, you're going to actually be taken to uh, this assignment right here. If you want to, you can reference the practice problems here in a PDF format, but these practice problems are actually in your note packet, so you can really use it like a workbook. When you try those practice problems and you want to see if you're right, click this document here to actually get the solutions and just check your practice. The practice is not required, but it is highly encouraged to do. Then you're going to be following up with your first formative assessment. The green puzzle pieces, a lot of the times, are going to be formative. Um, so when we look at this, it says here you must score at least 80% to move on. This is a homework quiz for the three learning objectives. This right here is an example of one of the questions you would be asked. So read the question, do the fill in the blank, and submit your responses. You do have three tries to achieve the 80% proficiency on here. If you do not make the 80% proficiency, you are locked out and you cannot move on. You must contact me to get some help in trying to figure out uh, the extra learning you need to do so you can resolve what you're not getting correct. Once that's been done, I'll unlock the quiz and you can move forward. Sometimes in the learning objective days, you're going to find what's called here a MC quiz. It's a multiple choice quiz. These are actual multiple choice questions that have been given on past exams. This question right over here is an actual example of a question that was on a past exam. You also have three tries on this multiple choice quiz and must uh, get at least 80% proficiency. Again, you will be locked out, but you can see me for some additional help and I can unlock it so you can move forward and continue your learning. Now, some of the daily learnings will also have applets for you to do. This happens to be day five within chapter one. It's a stats applet on histogram bin width. Just read the directions and it's going to tell you what to do. Click on the applet. When you're inside of it, all the directions are here. And this says to click on this link. When you click on the link, you'll be brought to an activity that you need to perform. Read the directions on what you're asked to do. When you're done with the activity, look at the follow-up follow discussion question that you need to answer. And you would go here in the comment section and give your reply to what your thoughts are. Not all chapters have applets for you to do, but you may see them once or twice within a chapter. Once all the daily learning is done and you've watched all your videos and taken your notes and done your practice problems and your quizzes, uh, we've wrapped up the material and we're going to start getting ready for our test. The first thing we're going to do is actually a free response analysis. Now in here, just read the directions. Um, you're going to be given a free response, um, so when you click on the folder, what I want you to do is do your initial write-up. 
When you click on this green puzzle piece, it will bring you to the actual free response question, which was a true free response in a past exam. Just do your best to answer it. This is actually not a graded activity, but just something for you to record. Once you're done with that one, you'll move on, just in the order. And notice it says, must make a submission. This one says, must post a comment. So it's going to tell you what you have to do. This second activity is actually a critique of a past student write-up. So you click on the critique, and it will actually bring you to this screen here. This is the student's response, and you're just being asked to uh, give your feedback on what type of score you would give them based on a 4 is a complete response, 3 is substantial, 2 is developing, and 1 is minimal. Do know for the AP exam to be considered passing of a free response, you must earn at least a 3 or a 4. Once you've looked at student 1's response, click on student 2's response. It's different. How do you, what do you think about it? Uh, would you score it the same? Would you score it differently? After you've done the critique, then I want you to actually click on the true scoring rubric published by the AP board. Read how they scored it and what the right answer was. Then that will wrap up this entire process. Now, the last thing you need to do, though, is uh, click on the assignment here and print out a brand new free response question related to this particular chapter. Print it out on paper and do your best in answering the question. When you're done, you actually click into the assignment and you're going to notice here you can submit to it. So upload a photo of your response and I will grade it. I will give you one opportunity to redo this write-up if you are not content with the score. I will score you out of a 4-3-2-1 system, just like the AP board. The next day following, we're going to get ready to the formal review. If you click on this little puzzle piece, it is going to bring you to uh, around 10 multiple choice questions and a couple of free response. I want you to do your best on this quiz. You have one opportunity to do it. It is not formally graded, it's just practice. At the end, you will be able to see the answers to the multiple choice. Following the day of practice would be the next day. And this is going to be a review session that we're going to hold in a virtual environment. So one thing I did when I taught this class in a brick and mortar is the next day after students tried the review practice, I had one person come up and explain each multiple choice question, why it was right and why the various answers were wrong. And the students really appreciated it and learned from it. So we're going to continue that. Um, in this uh, folder here, when you click in, you're going to find uh, that there's an, a problem assignment sheet. I'm going to use a random number generator and randomly assign the 10 problems every chapter to a student. So you'll want to look at the problem assignment sheet to see if you were chosen. Uh, now keep in mind this is statistics. You could be chosen every chapter just by the act of randomness. Well it says right here if you were assigned a review problem that you need to present via a screencast o -matic, or you can use another recording device. Um, and then this actually will be scored as a formative assessment. Um, when you've, let's say you were assigned problem three, Use Screencast-O-Matic or a different device and record between maybe a two and three minute video explaining why the one answer is correct and why the other four are incorrect. When you're done with that, go to the discussion question related to that particular number, in this case three, and you would upload a link to your video. This is going to be a resource that all students can reference if they are struggling with any of the questions and weren't sure why it was right. You guys are going to help each other learn in how to actually solve these multiple choice questions. Now after the review is done is going to hit our next day. I did break the testing session up into two separate days. You are more than welcome to take your test both pieces in one day if you would like. But here I have for day 11 would be just the multiple choice test. Again it's paper based and it's typically just 10 questions. I do give you two choices on your multiple choice uh, responses. You would label them one and two. If your first choice is correct, you get full credit. If your second choice is correct, you only get half credit. The next day then would be the free response, and again, that's paper-based. Uh, typically, this is between three and four free response open-ended questions. Now, to take these exams, you would either come to my classroom and set up a time to take it with me during school hours, or when we learn more about the testing room, the testing room at the school will be available, and you could do that after school hours. 
Now, when your exam gets corrected, if you are not happy with re your results, you can retake either one of these or both exams. But what you must do to do that is you first have to meet with me and we will for, uh, talk about your exam and where things uh, went awry and where you were struggling. We will then get out in the chapter your learning tracker and we need to do some relearning. If you look over here at this column on the tracker, uh, these are the try these relearning from your actual textbook. Um, all these problems are in the textbook. So when we sit down and go over your exam, let's say you really struggled with learning objective 1.1D. I would highlight this and say as you're relearning, try some of these problems. I have the answers for all of the questions in the textbook in my room, but you also have the odds posted in your textbook yourself that you can look up. Once you're done with your relearning and you're comfortable, then you would schedule a time to retake your test. Your ticket to retake is having your relearning activities written out as your practice work. Again, if you take the test with me, it would be during school hours only, or we could assign it in the testing room after school. Be, be cautious on the retake because you will get your second score, even if it's worse. There also is a window of opportunity for retakes. All chapter retakes must be taken by the next chapter test. Now, being that this is an online course, you may wonder, how are we going to communicate? My first main way to communicate with you all will be through the updates on Schoology. I plan on having uh, comments that are called the question board, and I will put question board whatever chapter it's related to. If a student asks me a question that I think is worth sharing, I will actually put that question on here in an explanation. Don't worry, I won't say what student asked that question, so it is anonymous. Also, I will give you weekly updates. I'm going to call that breaking news, and I will just list that it's week one, two, or three, whatever the dates are. And just talk about some of the key things that are going on for that week. Maybe a reminder of a test, or a reminder to say we're having the, the review session and you have to see if you got assigned a multiple choice problem where you have to make a video explanation of it. So just keep your eyes for the updates. Make sure you're set up to get notifications on these updates. I also will use email every now and then, but I will use the updates page as my prime uh, form of communication. Now because Schoology for this course is set up that you have to complete one activity followed by another in a sequential order, Sometimes you can't get to certain worksheets or quizzes when you think you should. If you ever try to click on an assignment and it won't open up because it says it's private, you want to check your student progress. Odds are there's something you did not do that you had to do before. What you do is when you're on Schoology over here, there's a student progress bar. If you click it, for example, when I'm in Chapter 1, it's going to show me the order in which things have to happen. So, for example, I have to do Day 1's activities. And the first thing I have to do is the video. Then I have to do the practice worksheet. Then I do the quiz. And you can tell right now it says I'm in progress. If you actually click inside the folder for day one, it's going to show you exactly in words what you need to do. Here it says for this particular video that you must view it. So maybe you forgot to view the video. So click on the video because that will then allow you to move on to the second thing in here. This practice worksheet is a must view item too. And the quiz is a must score at least 80%. So if you haven't scored at least 80%, you can't move on. So that might be holding you back too. Now students may have questions about what are your grades on certain assessments. All you can need to do is you can click on this grades icon here. And it's going to list them by the category. So this one here is formative, which is 20% of your grade. Here are some practice categories which aren't graded, but they're activities you did. For example, the chapter review or your initial free response um, write-up that you did. And then there's the summative category, which will basically show your multiple choice and free response tests. And here, it's 80%. Now, if you look back at the formative category, this is actually alphabetical and not in sequential order, so you might have to dig around and look and see um, if, where your assignment is. Now, be careful. This is not a progress thing. So if you're trying to click on to the next quiz, it may not let you go there yet because there might be a video you have to watch or an assignment you have to open or an applet you have to do. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this learning cycle one-page sheet I made for you. It just gives you an overview of how one chapter would go. We just walked through it on this video. I highly recommend printing this out for the first chapter so you get used to the process. It's just step-by-step step how you could see the learning work. 
Um, remember here, formative is going to be 20% of your grade and summative is 80. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do here is just what it says. Pick up your note packet from me in my room, do your chapter opener, maybe take a look at the calendar to see what the plan is going to be for the next week or the next month. Then you're going to start your daily learning. Uh, this is how you're going to go about through the daily learning. Is there an applet that's going to be scored as formative? Um, take your notes, try the practice. Notice here the stats homework quiz and the stats multiple choice quiz are both highlighted in blue. Those are formative assessments that are graded. That's 20% of your grade. You do have three tries. It measures the last score, but you must be 80% proficient to move on. You're going to repeat this process until you've gone through all of the daily learning for that curriculum. Once the daily learning is done, folks, then we just move on to that free response learning. Right? Do an initial write-up of, of a free response, then actually read some student responses and comment. These are formative assessments that will go into the 20% uh, category. Read the actual rubric, print out your free response of a brand new question, try it and upload it, which is another formative assessment that can be resubmitted one time for a different grade. Then we're going to get ready for the review. So you try the review assignment um, and it will get the answers at the end. Check and see if you were assigned a multiple choice question that you need to make a screencast-o-matic video for uh, to help the students in their learning for this test. If not, then you can skip that. Then we're actually onto the multiple choice test and the free response test, followed by choices you might make if you want to do some retakes. Hopefully this overview has helped you. Feel free to come in and ask me any questions or shoot me an email and I'm more than happy to help you out. Good luck with this course and I hope you like the format and you feel like you get thoroughly prepared for the AP exam in May.